Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called The Blue Morning River. I painted this. <laughs> I painted this back in June of 2022. I've been sitting on it for a while. Uh, it's a nice little painting, and it's I'm doing my blue thing. I'm doing my blue thing. Blue on gray. Um, we're starting with a little bit of black. Got a little blue mixed in it. Um, yeah, and uh, just been uh, kind of sitting on this uh, for when I had a hole. I'm getting ready for a um, an exhibition here and um, not so sunny Fongaray, uh, New Zealand, and so haven't been uh, painting much. Um, well, I did do some painting last week, but that was the uh, the the figures, the nude things, and uh, I don't know. I just haven't been able to 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 bring myself to put them down. They're very nice. You can check it out. I think there's a link underneath the. Uh, there's a few up in my uh, figure. Um, I have a figure painting channel, which is not that active. So whatever. Uh, but I do sell a few. So that's groovy and there's gonna be quite a few in the show too yeah um yeah basically uh this was a real quick little painting you can see in the members there you can see the reference you can see the uh, uh initial color mixing session i'm just riffing off a of blue it looks to me like i was using um probably phthalo if i have to guess and i do have to guess because it's like six months ago um, I'm guessing Thalo, a little bit of black, and yeah, that, that that's a, definitely has that Thalo feeling to it. Um, when I do the blue thing, sometimes I'll break out a couple different blues. I'm not so sure I did here. Uh, I think really what I did here was use the black mixed in with the blue, so you're kind of modifying the, because uh, black will tampen down and dampen the uh, intensity of the color the saturation um, but also of course has a darkening effect but if you're tricky with it you can use it just for that right also especially in conjunction with the white um, this is basically I think it's a three color painting yeah black blue and white yeah sometimes so when I do the blue thing um, like this is a little on the gray blue side uh what i'll do is i'll break out like some ultramarine and some thalo you know or i'll break out cobalt and thalo yeah um i had did another video but it ended up figuring out that i'd already put the uh the scene i painted um up on the channel so <laughs> that's not gonna work yeah <laughs> Um, but one of the things I was talking about there was uh, composition and, um, and and designing pictures. I think that's uh, probably a good topic to talk about. So it really doesn't matter what scene you're going after. Um, most likely you have some sort of photo reference. I get that question a lot for people come in my uh, studio uh, gallery there. You know, do you use do you use reference? And I do. I always do because. Um, I think if you're just painting strictly from the imagination, things get very archetypal, very samey. And there's already a certain quality of sameness to my work just because it's all been done by the same person. And also because I don't make, I don't make extreme efforts to, um, to like, oh, I'm going to make this one look super different from the next. I follow sort of an, for me, it's all about the integrity of each individual scene and having certain resonance you know um but the point i was making on that, that video which we'll never see the light of day now um if you, you are using a photo reference like um you could in this photo reference i did i did switch it up to some blue tones in photoshop um, but I abstracted it a lot and you can see it has a very loose uh, abstract sort of um, approach or you will will do when you see the we well, maybe you saw the initial opening screen but as as we progress I start pulling things together but most not most a lot of the things in that photo reference you're gonna need to eliminate you need to get rid of it that's just the way it is and 
the reason for that is because um, with our human perception we're scanning reality and we're constantly filtering information out and when people look at photos they do that as well when people look at paintings though they expect uh, they have a different uh, expectation whether it, it, that expectation uh, usually isn't conscious I don't think they just um, a good painter will know how to do that that filtering out process um, for the viewer so that the image basically <coughs> just goes right into the mind now obviously there's going to be a, a bit of scanning through the scene but it won't be the fight that it is when we're dealing with reality when you're dealing with reality um, you know it's infinitely detailed and, and um, photographs um, to a large degree are also highly detailed um, and so our filtering mechanism kicks in but if you as the painter um, it's incumbent on you to uh, pre-filter those images that you are painting uh, not not necessarily in Photoshop or anything but what I'm saying is pre-filter um, and eliminate details um, and really have a thought or a care for how the eye of the viewer is going to move through the painting now a lot of times I definitely am a big fan of starting on the um, because we're Western people we read left to right um, I'm quite big on on the entrance for the painting usually being in the lower left hand corner and I think that'd be the case here we come in through the lower left we go up the river we hit the sky we kind of ping around and there we are this is not like a real advanced composition you know it's a river type composition or it could be like a path as well this is obviously a river but uh, a broader path would function exactly the same as a, as a matter of fact there's a lot of times I might have a reference image where it is a road and I turn it into a river um, I like to saddle that area of imagination uh, where I can uh, do things like that um, and still have a degree of some uh, realism isn't really the word in fact I've never been that comfortable referring to myself as a realist because I'm just you know painting I'm a landscape painter and I do believe in bringing levels of abstraction to the work and that's part of the abstraction process obviously is simplifying things going for the big shapes um, you know I do get a lot of people coming into my studio and they say something like oh your work is so detailed what they're really seeing is the brush fracture and in some cases interesting interacting with uh, board texture and things like that <coughs> sorry about that a little cough there it's pretty early in the morning and I, I'm late on this video because like I said I thought I had it covered but I didn't I want to get you something though and um, yeah because I'm gonna be going in uh, and getting this uh, show at least uh, sort of sorted out figuring out where I'm gonna hang up things and things like that anyway thank uh, you know thanks for uh, showing up watching this video we're gonna have an ad for the book coming up very soon and I really appreciate those of you that have got the book I'm getting so much positive feedback it's really it's really gratifying um, anyway here we go with the ad it's coming five four three two one do you want to paint tonally do you want to paint better tired of trying to find the info you need on this channel there are hundreds of videos here you could watch for days and not find what you're looking for until now until now introducing my new book landscape painting the tonalist way everything you want to know in one place order your copy today landscape painting the tonalist way there'll be a link below the video the price is now 60 US uh, shipping it's it's just shipping um, 
And, uh, yeah, actually, you know, a good friend of mine was telling me, oh, just put the price and then the, uh, the shipping cost, uh, you know, whatever it is. It's like, yeah, that would be more. <laughs> I don't mind taking a bit of a hit because I really want this book to get into people's hands. Uh, well, you can see now I'm adding, so this is little bright spots around the trees. That's adding some real interest there. And I'm pulling that information from the photo. And, um... The thing is, like, uh, here's a great tip for you since you've been kind enough to get through my ad. Um, if you are one of these people that uh, the photo you're using the photos and you find it's really over stiffening the work, um, say at a point like this in your painting, put the photo reference away and just deal with the painting, just deal with making that look good. That's a huge tip, absolutely massive. Because the honest uh, fact is, is that you probably got already everything from that photo that you're going to need to get, you know. Um, it's taken me, and that's something I definitely used to do. I don't actually do it very often now um, because I, you know, have I've, done, I've overworked so many paintings in my life that I'm pretty hip to um, what I need to do, uh, which is, you know... Um, focus on the painting itself and not worry about things in the photo also you, you start learning what what it is in in the photo reference it isn't going to work and um yeah i'm remembering now i were uh, i referred to and i've referred to his blog before if you're into painting and you must be because you made it to 11 minutes of this rambling video um there's a guy named stapleton kearns he's a he's a pretty dang good painter and he has a really amazing blog he he doesn't keep it up anymore, but he doesn't need to because for about two year period he put absolutely everything he knew about painting into that blog, and it's an amazing education. Really, um, I learned so much from him, and I'll be eternally thankful and grateful. In fact, I really learned about the toneless painters from him, and um, as soon as I heard about people like Aness and started going down that rabbit hole. I was off to the races. I knew what direction I wanted to go with my work. So, um, but one of the things he does is he, he doesn't like to work from photos at all. He likes to go out into nature and create his painting plein air. And then he collects a bunch together. And when the winter, because he lives in like the eastern, um, you know, seaboard uh, in the U.S., um, the fall and winter comes along. He finishes his paintings in the studio. And I think that works, that obviously works great for him. Uh, for me, uh, plein air is not really my thing. And um, But I try to have a plein air sort of approach uh, with my reference. Uh, and I feel it's possible. You can treat the photo like you were looking through a window, you know. And um, if you know what the inherent traps uh, uh that are involved with using photos are then then know it and and be careful <laughs> you don't need to throw out the baby with the bathwater. there's another thing with photos you know they flatten everything out so um there could be scenes uh that uh you're apprehending in nature that uh, would work as a painting and, and so often this happens you take a photo and you go why did i take a picture of that you know well and it flattened everything out so on and so forth but again you know you could just be, be making paintings from your imagination alone so one of the reasons that i like photos is because um and mostly uh if someone was in my studio the other day and asked me about this uh and she was a photographer you know sort of interested in painting and i said well i mostly focus on co capturing compositions in nature and it's only a lot of times just part of the scene that I'm actually using. I might add a different road, I'm definitely going to add a different sky, so on and so forth. Uh, and this uh, very uh, often I will change the colors up. Um, so it would be the pattern of the trees uh, interacting with the road or just the pattern of the trees and the light and shadow. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me paint this little uh, scene i quite like this little painting and um i'll really appreciate you coming around and hanging out for a little bit um if you hey if you're in uh, new zealand come on by uh, the show opens on wednesday uh, the 18th out here 
Um, well, some of you are in New Zealand. I have a few people uh, out here that follow the channel. Come on down. Yeah. Anyway, until they come back with another video for your <laughs> edification and enjoyment. Do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family.